Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is West of Ezzanine, News 7's best reporter, here live on scene at the police station with some breaking details. Famous villain Jasper P. Watercrest was captured earlier today by the police force. He has committed a string of devious and elaborate heists in the past few weeks that has devastated the town. I'm getting word that... Oh, they, they've arrived! Oh! Oh! This is, this is Police Chief Brick Stoutman. Uh, Mr. Stoutman, do you, do you know what Jasper was after this time? Oh, we don't know who he was after, but we know he's gonna come before. The law! The court! With lawyers! Let's go! Uh, Mr. Watercrest, do you have any comments? No comment. <laughs> Mr. Watercrest, uh, what about you? Uh, Mr. Pipes, Russell Pipes. Officer Russell Pipes? Yes. Taking this man to justice. Yes, well... Uh, can I make a statement? Can I make a statement? Yes. Last summer I went fishing on the Allagash River. It's in upstate Maine. I survived for three weeks with nothing but a raw log of slice and bake and gushers. So I just want you to know that when you're thinking who brought justice to this town, you remember the name of Brick Stoutman. That will be all. But, but sir, sir, I need... That, that will be all. Good day. Well, this is West of Mezzanine reporting live from the police station where Jasper P. Watercrest has just been captured. And, um, y yes, Mr. Stoutland. Where Jasper P. Watercrest has just been captured and hopefully put in jail for good. Now, the only problem with Stephanopoulos' machine is that if you push these two buttons, it's a felony. Yeah, that sounds like one hell of a camping trip. That's what I thought. Coming up on News 7, we've got a live trial of Jasper P. Watercrest, the criminal mastermind who was captured seven days ago and now faces justice. Our own West de Mezzanine is on the case right now at the trial. We'll see you later at News 7. Until then, I'm Wesley Snipes. My name is Barbara McGravy. I'm Barbara McGravy, and we'll see you later. Thank you. Hello, this is News 7's reporter Weston Mezzanine reporting just seven days after the miraculous capture of Jasper P. Watercrest, mastermind criminal. We're off to his trial right now, which is scheduled to begin any minute. Let's see what's going on inside. All rise for the honorable judge, Mayor Ronaldo Sexpuddle. It should be trial of the people versus Jasper P. Watercrest. The people are represented by Sudesh. Does the defense have an opening statement? We do, Your Honor. There are some questions in life that cannot be answered. Where did we come from? Where are we going? How do landlocked nations get fish? What? makes a man evil. Now, this man in front of me, Jasper P. Watercrest, Jasper Percival Watercrest, has been said to have done some evil things. But I ask you, what is evil? Is taking some money for yourself, even if you did not rightfully earn it, evil? Is making someone dead when they didn't want to be? Evil? Gentlemen, if, if these things are evil, then this man sitting before me is guilty of evil acts 65 times over. But I ask you, what makes this evil? Who are any of us to decide what's evil? What defines a righteous deed? We're all just sitting around this huge chunk of rock hurtling through space at 300 miles an hour. And I ask you, in the grand cosmic sense of things, what is right? Cause and effect, Your Honor. Effect and cause. What are you going to do when those cuffs click around your wrists? That's what I want to know. You're going to be doing the backstroke up a creek without floaties. Oh, look at me, Mommy. I'm in the water. But you know what? You won't be in the water for long. The water will be in you, just like it's in all of us. Just like it found its way into Jasper P. Watercrest. Just like it went through his pores. Be careful about your pores. You gotta stuff them up. You gotta make sure that nothing can get in 
or out. Justice, my friends, is, as Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, nothing more than a spigot on a cow's mammalian plain hind. But what happens when that hind gets dressed and it's not plain anymore? I'll tell you what happens. We've got ourselves a case of roan punishment. And there's nothing worse than roan punishment. If you take freedom away from Jasper P. Watercrest, he will be a man with nothing left to lose. And there's nothing more dangerous than a man with nothing left to lose. So yes, if this trial is all about whether or not somebody is guilty of the crimes that you're charging them with at this trial, then this man is so guilty, unequivocally. But if this is about whether or not we are existentially good at heart, then acquit us all. Acquit us all in the face of the grand cosmos. We are free to walk. We are free to walk in your great Milky Way plains. Oh, space, where my mother did look when her neck was stiff, you are my cradle, but you are also my liberator. And from your penitentiary of self-doubt and self-righteousness, I walk free of the cuffs, the cuffs of arrogance and the cuffs of scrutiny from above. Let me walk free, Your Honor. Let me write my novel. It's a novel about us all. About you. And I will author it. Mankind's self-affirmation. For that is who writes the book of human history. Thank you. Do the people have an opening statement? Guilty! Guilty! What? Objection, Your Honor! No objection. Okay. I sentence you to sentence you to life in prison with a chance for parole in 20 years. You're lucky I'm that lenient. It's true, you did some bad crap. I don't like you. Bailiff, take him away. But, uh, come on! This is ridiculous! Get ready to spend some quality time with your good friend, Russell Pikes. Okay. Oh, no! I'm not going to do what people of this town that regret it! The day they cross! Jasper P. Watercrest. Found him. <laughs>
Hello, this is Channel 7 reporter Wes DeMezzany reporting 20 years and 7 days after the miraculous capture of Jasper P. Watercrest. Today is his parole hearing. Will the devious mastermind be back on the streets? Let's go inside and find out. Looks like another failure for Wes DeMezzany. We're here today for the parole hearing of Jasper P. Watercrest. Allow me to introduce, introduce the members of the parole board. To my left is Chief of Police Ronaldo Sexpuddle. To my right is Sudesh. But as we all know, when Sudesh is attending a parole hearing, his name changes to Roll of Thunder here by Bish. Uh, I'd like to just start out by saying that I believe that the defendant is absolutely despicable. Uh, he has committed crimes against the people of this town that have become stuff of legend, and our tourism department has suffered for it. Also, the people he left dead or impoverished could not ever recover. I believe that he deserves to remain in prison for the rest of his life, for the life of his mother. Does anybody else have anything to add? Oh, by the way, I would like to thank our bailiff, uh, Russell Manpipes Jr., for taking time out of his bear ripping class to attend this hearing. Uh, does anybody else have anything to say about the matter of releasing this convicted felon? I would like to say something, if you will. I think that this man he is no longer the very, very bad man that he was 20 years ago when he was captured. I think that he has changed significantly since that day, and I think that right now he is no longer the guy that will do those very, very bad things. And I think that he must be released immediately. I disagree. Officer Sexpuddle, do you have anything to add? 20 years ago was a long time for everyone. I had a full, thick head of... We did just a lot. Yes, yes, that. This man was a hard family. But I look into his eyes, I don't see that anymore. I see a changed man. I agree with Sudesh. We should let him go. I believe you mean, roll of thunder here by Desh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. See your familiarity with names is as strong as your familiarity with justice. Hey! It hey! Okay. In, in my, in you my can insult my memory. You hold on. You can insult my memory, but you cannot insult my character. I have something to say. Yes, Mr. Manpipes Jr. I, Russell Manpipes Jr., proud son of Russell Pipes, a man who brought Jasper P. Watercrest to justice. 20 years ago, object to his being released back into the community. I agree with most of what you said. I just agree about one thing. Mr. Manpipes Jr., your father was a hell of a cop, don't get me wrong. When he died, I wept. I wept like a baby, I admit it. I wept like a baby who cried acid tears. <laughs> But don't you ever say that he's the one that brought this despicable felon to justice. Remember that it was me, Brick Stoutman, slayer of the Falgorn dragons, who brought him to justice, who clutched him by the throat and said, Nay. And I said, Pipes, take him away. And your dad was all like, oh, okay. But a lot of things have changed since then. He used to have a mustache. The one thing that doesn't change is the record. And the record says it was I who took that man and saved society from his ill doings. Be that as it may, in the name of Russell Pipes, I implore that you do not let this man hurt more innocent people. I agree. I agree, Mr. Pipes. I, for one, vote against the parole of Jasper P. Watercrest. Thank you.
Mr. Hear My Desh. What is your book? I wrote that day very least immediately. That's stupid. Officer Sex Funnel. What is your book? Released. That's also stupid. What's also stupid as well, in addition to that, is that I now am obliged, Mr. Watercrest, to release you. Do you have anything to say on your behalf after these most grievous events have come to pass? Members of the council, 20 years ago was a long time. I may have done some things that today I may have done differently, made different choices. Because my 20 years in prison have taught me there are far more worthwhile things than petty thefts and tawdry murders. And You're a liar. He is a liar. Thank you, Mr. Manpipe Jr. Hey, hey, this is a hearing. Sex for the loop. Driven this town to the ground. Continue, Mr. Watercrest. I've changed, members of the council. I've changed. I will do the most I can to continue to have an effect upon this community with my newfound freedom. See? See? Don't let him do it. God help us all, Man Pipes Jr. There's nothing I can do. This community will never recover. Hold me, Man Pipes. Oh. It's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need those documents, Rat. I know, Paste, I know. Just trying to get this iron thing open. Boss I haven't seen one of these since bad. school. Mm. Use a crowbar. A crowbar, Paste. Everyone. Do you have a crowbar? I do. Go get it. Uh, I will. No, we don't have time. Okay, fine. You just keep on lock picking away. You never could pick a lock. I could pick every lock. Lies. Pace. Truths. Can't keep on dreaming dreams that aren't real. <laughs> you smell something? It smells a little like bacon. It smells I like some sort of pork product. Maybe they're cooking in there. Maybe there's a barbecue. Some hams, some ham. Nope. No. It's the cops, Lazo. I'm out of here. Yeah. I have to get these. Okay. Here you go. I'll be fine. You I can make be. it. Fine. Just live without taking them. Don't take my glasses. I got this. Okay. Just go. Just go. No. Excuse me. You're under arrest. For breaking federal provision 3.124 against crimes. You're under arrest for dying.
with teeth. You see, uh, he's already stuck his evil tendrils. No, 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 I was going to build a multiplex. See, he was going to build a multiplex. He's a criminal. He doesn't lie. Criminals never lie. That's, this is what That's why doing. they're called criminals. This is Watercrest's doing, Sex Puddle. What? And it's all your fault. No. You have damned us, Sex no. Puddle. You have damned us. I'm so angry I can't see forwards. Take him. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll take him. You know, back in my day, I would have dealt with you the right way. The good way. The way justice was meant to be done. Unfortunately, our town is in the uncapable hands of Chief Sex Puddle. Hey. And Chief Sex Puddle is going to deal with this problem the way he sees fit. Probably by letting him go. Maybe make him king of bathrooms. Yeah. Because, you I know, that's just that. what we need. I might do that. Look, we look need our face. fragile plumbing to be governed mm -hmm. by some fiend. You make me sick. And so do you. Mm -hmm. Get him out of here. Okay. Chief. Tell your man pipes. Where Sometimes life throws you for a turn. Get in there. Ah. 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 Come on. I got better things to do. I got to You got better recruits. things to do than to administer justice? I have to meet the new recruits. This town is melting before my eyes. Yeah, yeah, Let's whatever. go, Chief. Man pipes, I need a stiff neck. Look exactly like a criminal, and you may not be aware of some of the new U.S. government regulations governing criminal activities. For instance, you need to have a perfectly licensed hideout, and I, thanks to be to God, I'm just the man you're looking for. Arnold McClintock Hideout Sales, Rentals, and Purchases. Now, come with me. I think that I've taken you to the ideal location to prevent anyone from thinking that you are the kind of criminal who would be found hiding out in a suboptimal location. Is that not right, Mr. Fetchett? Yes, it is. Go fetch it, Mr. Fetchett. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who's fetching. Um, we're going to come in here, and you all will be living in the most opulent squalor of any criminal of the last 200 years. Bugs crawling all over you just to inspire you to do more mellifluous deeds and malicious actions on all your contemporaries and friends, come over here. Walk right in. The door is left open just to assuage any suspicions that you or anybody else might actually be hiding inside. Perfect spot upstairs for you to leave your address and say, Mr. Fetch it, have you fetched it? Thank you, sir. Stop it, Mr. Come inside. Step right in, sir. Step right in. This abode is rather roomy. Exactly. It's a tad cavernous for my taste. Well, I know exactly what we can do. Burn half of it down. Mmm, wouldn't that draw attention from the authorities? Exactly. The sort of attention that you can slip off the other way and hide out somewhere else. That's exactly why this is the perfect hideout for you. What's that? Oh, that's a garage. That's a cut price hideout. Let me show you. Some of my other clients. A lovely, lovely, kind-hearted gang of murderers hide out here, commit some wonderful, inventive crimes. Now, if you step inside, you'll notice that it's very difficult to enter. This keeps the police out. And look at this part of wall. It's entirely opaque. You can't see through it. Exactly what you want from a wall in a hideout. Mm. Imagine you're a policeman, and I am a crook like yourself. Can you see me anymore? No. I'm hiding. Isn't that amazing? 
Come on in. The number of blunt objects that you will find in this pile for the committing of crimes is enormous. Picture frame, perfect for framing somebody. Piece of wood, perfect for banging somebody on the head with, or starting a fire and being an arsonist. If that's the sort of crime you're into, broken glass, perfect for grinding up and putting in somebody's food. Supposedly a kind of poison, though not everybody believes it. You can try it though. What do you think? This is excellent. As soon as we take care of the others who inhabit the place, it will serve me well. Well, they're murderers, so of course they're not opposed to murder. Right. You could kill them. That was the intention. I know, I just wanted to make it clear, you know, oh. that you're really a criminal. Of course. I don't sell to lawful people. No. No. Which theoretically could mean you could steal. The Compromise your, the integrity of your business. Exactly right, sir, exactly right. Of course. Now, do you need any assistance in murdering? I have a lot of clients who are criminals that could help you. Mr. Fetcher, thank you, sir. Could you go fetch me a murderer? <laughs> ah, Mr. Fetcher, it is a useful man, sir. See? I caught him untying my shoes so that he could steal them. Someone had told him to fetch a pair of shoes. Yes, what a wonderful, wonderful man. I told him to fetch his fetcher. And I killed him, and then sold the body mm. as a hideout. He oh. was a fat, fat man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this, is, this is awful. This is absolutely really? terrible. This is just awful. <sighs> Whatever. I'm the uh, chief and your new boss. Nice to meet you both. My name's Cormac Hardlove, but you can just call me Hardlove. Will do. How about you? My name's Satellite Ramadan, but you can call me a number of things. Joe, Winrent, Dirty, Alagamop9, Keels Dutt, Sightens, Rosh Job, Sudesh. But as my two-toed cousin who spends the most of his time in swamps likes to call me, Hard Love. So you're, you're both... Ne never mind, okay. So I have some very important business for you two. Not, not that important, you're new. God damn it, Chief! I didn't come to this force to be treated like a rishi. You can't just leave us out like two Sudeshes sitting on a pond waiting for the fish to spawn. Come on! What does that even mean? It means something! You know what it means. I'm, I'm gonna start you out on the case where we, we have, we've had some robberies. Nothing, nothing major, but it's still important. And, you know, we, we don't know who's doing the robberies, but we'd like to do local stuff. I want to put you two on it. How's that sound? Is that all right with you, hard love? Hard love, I'm down with this. Nothing's too hard for me. Boss. Welcome to the hideout. It's nice. Where's Lazo the rat? He got lost. lost. Oh, hey, um, the cops got me, but I escaped. And I picked up a little something on the way. Ah. It's with the rest of the staff. Excellent work, rats. You, boss. Well, gentlemen, with this job under our belts, we move to strike the house of a wealthy government official tomorrow. I expect the job to be done seamlessly. Watch out for the police. I've made several traps around to test their incompetence, but as of yet, I'm not sure of their mental capacity. I doubt it is very much. But be cautious, nonetheless. You know us, boss. Oh, gentlemen, when you get to the location, you'll be meeting up with another one of my men. Proceed. Where'd he go? Oh, I lost him. to be getting your mail, isn't it, sex fuck? Uh, yeah. I, I, uh... You know, you know that, that guy? Oh, yeah, your big catch. Yeah, um... I don't, I don't, I don't know where he is. He, he was, he was here, and then he was not here. And I'm thinking, like, normally, like, criminals, criminals don't escape, Sam. right? Right? They don't do that. Damn, that's um, good! Sex puddle. No. What? I have put up long enough with your... 
Tom Sam. I watched you drive this town into the ground mm -hmm. On the with your What's flagrant you? abuses of justice. Yeah. Stupid. Stupid. But I. <laughs> this just takes the cake here, sex photo. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He's gonna build a multi. Right? Letting a I'll man the... spit in the face of justice. And run free when he should be in prison. But he'll be building multiplexes. He said he was gonna build a multiplex. Multiplexes of crime? Oh, oh, I get it. Okay. I am okay. sick of oh, you, okay. sex model. Okay. This town cannot stand you. It is falling apart. Don't we get hit? No. No. Anyway, I've had, I've had it. <laughs> I can't, I cannot watch this abuse of justice continue. Mommy's here. You're out. Yeah, she's here. Come on. Yeah. You are no longer police chief sex puddle. Then I'm mayor sex puddle. You, yes. Yeah. I guess. Wait, really? You can be mayor sex puddle. Nice. Take that hat and wear it well, but for God's sakes, let Chief Stoutman be reborn. Okay. Here. I have him somewhere. Oh. Uh, oh, jeez. Too long. Uh, for too long, sex. Just gotta get these out. Hold on one sec. You know, I have seen a lot of failures in my day, but of all the failures, you are the worst. Oh, sweet nectar of Lensington. Finally, I feel like an authority figure once again. Justice shall return to this town like the swallows return to their roosting before their death. Using the electromagnetic brainwaves of radio antennae sent to them by God and his messengers. What's the shebang, Chief? You two. Come with me. I'm the mayor now. Ch Chief? Uh. Job well done, sex puddle. Alright, they call me Briggs Stoutman. He used to run this place back in the 70s before Sex Puddle took over. Sex Puddle got a promotion. He's the new mayor, I'm the new police chief. Now let me tell you one thing. I'm not going to be quite as trusting of you. You precinct 12 rookies. You're the worst precinct in the town. Sex Puddle seemed to take a liking to you. You're not going to be so easy to please. But I'll give you a chance, though. You guys look serious. Don't worry, Stoutman. The hard loves play hardball. And let me tell you, that is why I brought the botch here. Italian lawn bowling. Now, man pipes, you want that promotion, right? Alright, then you're our bocce pin. Act bocce! Act like a duck! Ugh! Damn it! <laughs> Warms the mind, fills the body. I love Bachi. Bachi is a good game, America's past. I love you. Right. We lost valuable time playing Bachi, which was great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Wonderful. Good game. Brought your A game that down. Trophy. Always keep it in my breast pocket. It's good. It's good to have things in your breast pocket. It makes you know that you mean business and lets other people know. Breast business. Chief. Breast business. The only kind of business there is. Was it not Warren G. Harding who said, the business of America is breasts? And then Woodrow Wilson added, business, Harding. And he's like, yes, and they slapped butts. I remember that. Yeah. So. Well, uh, with a bag of Tostitos, just watching that over and over again oh, on the radio. Slathered in some creamy cheese, if I recall. I like lampshades. You're right. That's why I carry a broom gun. Anyway, giving you a chance to prove yourselves worthy of this force. How so? Hold on. I want to see who wins. It's always a stalemate. You were saying? I was saying, I've got an assignment for you, a chance to prove yourselves. You've got here the Watercrest folder. Every crime that Watercrest has committed was put down in this folder. And this morning we received this note. It's a long note. What does it say? It says, Dear cops, there will be a robbery today at an important government house. 
So I need you to go to this address. You go to this address. I need you to have a stakeout. You rookies know how to do a stakeout, don't you? Of course we do. Put the charcoal, right? Anyway, bring them back alive. You got it. Or Chief. dead. Just bring them back. We won't let you down. Best not. Go grab those steaks. <laughs> This is the house. Looks like it. Got reports there might be a robbery here later on tonight. How much longer? You can never tell how long with me, hard love. God knows you're worth the wait. Should probably find a location to stake out the house. We should find out somewhere we can just sit down and watch them. Because they'll be coming. his popcorn? Hard love. Hard love loves his popcorn. He loves it hard. And buttery. They'll be here soon. They will be here soon. We should keep a lookout. Yeah. You know, you know who doesn't need to keep a lookout? Who? Jabba Chamberlain. Yes! He doesn't. A hundred uh, eyes on each hand. He has a hundred eyes everywhere. He has, he he has a hundred eyes in his eyes. He has an eye second, which he keeps a in a box. Yeah, he has like eyes in his... Nose and eyes in his feet and oh, dude, dude, he yes, he was. oh yeah, so good, uh, more yes, uh, oh god, he. Oh. <laughs> Sicilian pizza lived in the ocean and it'd have gills. Does a Sicilian pizza have cheese? Oh, it has a lot of cheese. <laughs> So I heard that Sturge Raymond was able to stop the evil Imperial Maserati again. If only we had a man like him on the force.
You have a jawline that can cut knives. Wrong. Forgot my canteen at the stakeout spot. He was like my brother. Hard love. Yeah, hard love. I'm sorry. Did a bus, got the stuff, put it in the stack. Excellent work. Where's the man you were supposed to meet? Um, well. Take me alive. Is not to me. I still have the two of you, and I expect you to get the job done. Good work on the last mission. Go to a convenience store. Rob it. Any? Which one, boss? Do you think I care, rat paste? Just go. Yes, boss. You got it, boss. Damn it, hard loves. I don't know what they did back in Precinct 12, but here in Precinct 68, we do things the right way. We, we tried as best we could. We just got distracted by a little something. It was easy to get distracted, Chief. There were distractions. They distracted us. Let me tell you a little something about distractions. I know distractions. Let's begin with a D. And end with the distractions. You are. Can do to a man. Let me tell you a little story about a distraction, Hart. And Hart. You used to have a family. Beautiful wife. Beautiful kids. Ugly dog. Lived in a house on a hill. Ew. You know, that's not the part that's bad. Uh. We were all really happy. Until one day I was barbecuing clams. And I got distracted just for a second. Because guess what was on TV? Hard love? No, the history of number munchers. No. And I was watching that. Some I really like number munchers. But you know what happened while I was distracted? You ate a prime? No. 
carrier pigeons were attracted to the flame because it was winter, and they roosted in, in the grill. And when my daughter found them, they were all charred and dead from roosting on the grill. And she started sobbing uncontrollably, and she cried for so long that she got dehydrated. We had to rush to the hospital, but on the way, we ran over my dog in the driveway. Then, trying to clean the blood off the bottom of the car, I accidentally got my hand stuck in the engine. I cried for help, and my wife came to rescue me. But as she tried to pull it off, my fingernail came off my finger, and I yelled at her. And she got so distraught, she got into our other car and went to the supermarket, because that always made her feel better. Yeah. How was I to know that they were having a sale that day? And the sale was free ice cream. And one person took one look at the sign, and she added, free ice cream! And everybody in the entire town came running to the supermarket, trampling my wife to death. My daughter was still dehydrated, and I tried to escape her soda. How was I to know soda is high in sodium? You can look on the back. Another distraction. You know it was on the back? Odd love? Yes. No. What? Free coupon. Yeah. So I took the coupon, and I went... It's this. See what your noodling around has brought us? It's a letter from Watercrest. It says, Dear Cops, Ha 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 ha! You what, did, you, what? What flavor is it? What flavor is this letter? Yeah. Cherry meringue? It's a note from Watercrest! God. Yes. What does yes, it say? It's, 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 Dear Cops, Ha 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 ha! I fooled you. I was only setting up these crimes to prove how incompetent the police force was, and you proved my point quite well. I have only been distracting you so I can build up for the greatest heist this town has ever seen. Love and kisses, Jasper P. Watercrest. Oh my god. What do you think this heist could be? Well, Lord knows what it could be. Watercrest has pulled every devious act this town has ever known. What could be the biggest, though? He already took the town's tea, to making us live as an owl for six years. Do you remember those times? Don't ever yeah. talk to me about the owl. Couldn't use the sidewalks because they were alligators. Couldn't feed your kid with your left hand because your left hand was taxable. What could be worse? Don't ever talk to me about the owl ages. Maybe he's trying to bring us back to that time. No. Maybe he's trying to skin all the mountains. Can he? He can, just like he sheared the wolves. I, w I was afraid that he was going to take our feet and make them into hooves. And when we tried to wear heels, we couldn't do it and people would trip all over the place, and knee doctors would get paid a lot more since there'd be more knee doctors. I have knee doctors! doctors. Sorry, guys. I have something to say. Not now, Man Pipes Jr. Nancy, make sure no knee doctors get in here. If it's knee doctors, then God help us. I think we need an arrest warrant for every knee doctor in the precinct tri-county area. Well, maybe. It's a bomb! No, no, stop, stop. It's just Brent Danger, back from excavating the gum trees of the Amazonian rainforest. Oh. I, uh, I think he's after Malthusilus Gord. Malthusilus Gord? Malthusilus Gord.
heard a voice. It was a voice from the heavens. From the depths of the Valhalla itself. Speak again! What? Yes. Yes, that is me. Yes, I like those. Strawberry. Fruit juice. Yes. A gorge, you say? I'll take it. When can I have it? That's my cousin's birthday! I demand it now. Thank you. Men. What? My you loyal companions. Greg. Steven. Viking 2. Viking 1. Greg. Steven. We have been granted a great gift from the God of Chaos. Loki! Loki has granted us the gourd of always winning. If one were to blow this gourd in the midst of battle, they would attain victory. Viking number one, you are our group cartographer. Tell us where we might find Loki. To set, my lord. Oh, I found him! To the north! Hello, my son. Loki, I thank you for this gift of never losing ever. You are most welcome. It's all slimy. It's all slimy! <laughs> Did anyone see Norbit? Oh, nobody sees Norbit. You're right. What's oh. this? Oh, oh. The goal! It's all slimy! And now we shall never lose. He brought gushers! This god won't bring us victory. The Punisher will! The Punisher? You think your mere children's toy could beat? The vast armies of England? Punishment! Oh, that... How did that feel? Uncomfortable! That's right. Come on, men! The Punisher will lead us to victory! No! Oh, oh, God. God. Oh. It seems we have a parting of ways. How dare you defy the Punisher? I'm getting angry! Lo, it be his anger, Helm! Rock. He is a spicy corn filled anger pepper, <laughs> while you are a sad and sour grape pepper. Let's remove their nut meats. Yes! Yeah! And we shall do battle! You will rue the day that you went against Malthusala's gourd! <laughs>
You dared go against Malthusa, greatest of Vikings, slayer of the Falgorn dragons. I, who built the towers of Hilltop, who climbed the trees of Treetop, and who painted all the potatoes in the world red. Now you know my power. Now you know the power of Malthusa's gourd. But your undoing has been my undoing, for I relied on you for supplies, for I can't farm, and I used to steal your gushers, and I have no gushers of my own. Sadly, the things you mistook for gushers are actually marbles. Now I shall wander these frozen wastelands alone, nursing my wounds and reliving past victories until I, too, am as dead and cold as you before me. I'm going now, I'm going. Sick of this. Centuries passed, and the tales of Malthusa's gourd became legend. Thousands sought to find it, but none were so intent as the Fellowship of the Gourd, a secret society dedicated to uncovering the lost relic. If we'll all rise, we will do the commencement dance of the Fellowship of the Gourd. <clears throat> Are we ready to begin? Ready to begin. In out, in out, who's your granddad? Backstroke, breaststroke, front stroke, who's that? Your friend, my friend, knobby knees, knobby knees, heel toe, heel toe, all akimbo, let's begin. Take your seats, gentlemen. Now, as you know, when a new member performs the commencement dance perfectly without any prior knowledge of how the commencement dance is performed, we must perform the congratulations dance. So, if we'll all rise. All right. <laughs> oh, today's the day. Congratulations, you did what you did. Today's the day. Congratulations, handshakes all around. You've got a hand worth shaking. You've got an acquaintance worth making. No arms, no, no arms, arms, no arms, no arms. I don't have arms ever since I lost them in a freak dry cleaning accident in the search of the gourd. Yes, the gourd. That brings me to our first point of discussion, which is Malthusala's gourd. Um, Mr. McCaw, I do believe that you, uh, have recent news about the location of the gourd. Yes. Yes, where is it? Yes, well, we all know that the gourd has evaded us for millennia, weeks, hours, months, years, decades, minutes, seconds, days, more hours. Yet, I have recently gotten word from the constable himself that there has been a sighting of an object in a field. Well, now... You know what we must do. We must celebrate our postures, as is the chap club chapter's rule for whenever somebody that is not at the meeting spies an object in the field that may or may not be the gourd. So, I will start. <clears throat> My spine is straight, it's getting late, and I will now sit down. And here I am, the new member of the group, upon these fond fellows, a gourd sighting. Congratulations. My back is flat and I don't have scoliosis. 
My back is normal, but I don't have arms. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I do propose that this evening we make tracks to this field and search for the gourd. I'd rather we discuss this napkin. Funny thing about that napkin, that's the secret action napkin of the day. We must now all perform the oh. ceremonial action dance. Of course. All right, of course. <laughs> Hark across the fields. I'm the I'm the spazzle. Well, what? what's that sticking out of your shirt? That's my back. It's my, my, my normal back. It's back. Norm, normal. That, that doesn't look like so a back. It's a back. That it looks like an arm. Oh, it's an arm. I'm the spazzle. He is armful. Armful basil. Who would have thought? Such arms could bring such pain. I have arms. You know what this means, gentlemen. Unfortunately, the Fellowship spent so much time dancing that they never got anything done, and the gourd remained undiscovered. That seems... unlikely. You know, this new chief... Not so good. Not as good as sex mother. Not at all. It's kind of like the cheese you leave in the fridge, but you don't cover it up, so it gets all hard on the edges. Yeah. Right, sex puddles just... He was, he was smooth and creamy. His diamonds just... hard around his... Yeah, edges. Anyways. Ugh. Walk places. I have rocket shoes. Sex photo promised me rocket shoes. No more walking. Hey, Sudesh. These two. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. All right. Really? We're awesome. cops. They're free. Okay, yes, sir. Very good. The guys have really good. Good. Okay, the boss told us to hit this place. So, got some more oh, junk for the pile. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Just finish with Come on, ladies. Sorry, finish women. Best people. Can't offend finish women. Those were delicious. Absolutely delicious. Cool it's like that. I love it. Wait, Ard, look. Did you grab the lucky raisin? Oh, come on. Come on! Lucky raisin stack. Here we go. Oh, dear. Are you happy? Oh, um, tons of them. Tons of them. Tons of them. Tons of them. What? Oh, no. How are we going to be able to buy our raisins? Um. Can we just take it? Yeah. You know, man pipes, this hard looks mean well. But what right do they have just marching into this precinct? I don't know. This precinct is the precinct of my father, Russell Pipes. Yes, it is quite a history. History I don't want tainted by a bunch of rookies from Precinct 12. No, I don't trust them. Listen, man pipes, between you and me, I don't want them getting the glory of catching Watercrest. I want you to help me bring them down before they do. I'd be honored, sir. You're a hell of a cop, man, Pipes. Chief, sorry we're late. It's hardly our fault. Head to toe, mayonnaise, didn't realize where I was. Every Wednesday. It was Thursday. My God. We had a late night. Anyway, Chief, we're ready for our next assignment. All right. We have a hint as to where Watercrest Base might be. It's probably located east of Town Hall, in a hole in the ground. But it's not there yet, so what you're going to have to do is go due east from Town Hall for six miles and dig a giant hole, and Watercrest will probably be there. This is authentic information from the chief. Got it, chief. Yeah. 
What about his minions? Watercrest minions? You'll have to go six miles due east of Town Hall. Take a big hole. And there they'll be. We were fans with the way from catching them last time, and then they just disappeared. This is a uh, crazy. The whole business of law enforcement is a fans with here and a fans with there. Till finally you've got the whole beltway between you. You ready, um, hard love? Hard love's always ready. Let's go. East. And yeah. so they were gone. Like the dinosaurs from the Deccan traps. Man pipes. You might have picked up on my little ruse. It was very clever. Of course. Watercrest. Doesn't live in a hole. He's far too pampered for that. Most likely he lives in some warehouse, plotting his next move. And we're gonna find that warehouse. And we're gonna bring him down. Yes. We'll bring him down. I'll bring him down. We'll bring him down. He'll bring him down. She'll bring him down. But the hard loves won't bring him down. No, they won't. It's like they always say, there's no problem that can't be solved by digging a hole. Another success, boss. Excellent work, gentlemen. Excellent work. All the pieces for the big heist but nearly in place. And all the places, nearly in pieces. <laughs> the clever one. Gentlemen, I want this heist to go off without a hitch. Understood? Therefore, I suggest you prepare mentally, visually. I recommend the film Ocean's Eleven. Subsequently, Ocean's 12, and in series 13, if you would go that far. We do it for you, bots. We go to the ends of the earth. Good. Train yourselves well. Alright. Let's go! Yeah! I'm so happy, I'm all happy, very lucky me. I just go my way. Things that bother you never bother me. Things that bother you never bother me. I feel happy and fine, ha ha. Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. Having got a lot, I don't need a lot. Coffee's only a dime. Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. Said to go. Six miles to east of town hall. Better, Better be speaking. Sure to find Watercrest eventually. Just think, 60 miles below the surface of the earth. He's waiting. Him and his minions. Pool of magma, Chief said. Did he? Oh, he did. I wasn't listening, I was too lost in your lenses. Is between those cracks where I've been digging. We've been digging a bit. And I'll call this a shovel hammer for nothing. I've been at this for well over 30 seconds. This is where I've been digging. We haven't found anything. Hey! He's in there. Fine, fine. All right, what? My God, he's escaped. You let him escape? I did not let him escape. That's I, your fault. I'm pretty sure he was in there. I was digging there for two days. So loyal I haven't bathed in weeks, 
And you let him escape. I did not let him escape. He was oh. not... Oh, okay. So maybe he was just in there and... Maybe he's, in, maybe, him he's invisible. maybe he's invisible. How are we going to find him if he's invisible and below the earth, hard love? The last invisible guy we tried to find... Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. We didn't find him. Just his clothes. And a whole convent of angry nuns. And I'm not doing this again. Look, we gotta get... We gotta get to the bottom of this. Chief, the chief is counting on us. We tried to get to the bottom, and there was just... There was just another small rock. What is that doing there? I don't Why know. Why is it that water crest? I thought he was invisible. Now he's a rock. Why'd you... Why'd you we can't arrest a rock. It doesn't have any hands. How could we handcuff him if he doesn't have any hands? I've... I've, uh, I've put up with you for so long. Oh, I've... You've put I've, up with me. I've put up with you. Yeah, I've put up with you for so long. I've, 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 this, this has happened more times than I can count. This, this exact situation. And you, last time it was not a rock. It was a very small Jeep Cherokee. Yeah. It was a very small They're the Jeep same Jeep. thing Hot in Wheels. my in my heart. No, Hot Wheels are cool. This is stupid. Stupid. You no know one else is stupid. You. You're saying me. Because you're stupid. And I, I don't like stupid people. Don't, I, I, stupid people don't like you because you're dumb. We don't like dumb people. You just call me stupid and then you call me dumb. Well, they're... Yes. You know what? I don't need you. I don't need the force. I could be my own man. I could just have enough... I could give myself all the hard love I need. You, you think that? I do. Is that what you think? It's what I think. Well... Fine. Just take sledge. And I'll take this. It doesn't even want to come. It's like you. It's nothing. Just take the stick. And we'll go make a sheep carnival. And we'll be in the papers. We'll watch movies and stuff. We don't want you. No. No, we don't. He's sticking around. He's not going anywhere. We're done, hard love. We're done. I know. When I do that, I love those glasses. Can you hand me mine, actually? Wait, hard love. Can you hand me mine? Sure. They're gonna get dirty all around there. This looks like the place, man pipes. This is where the clues led to Jasper Watercrest's hideout. Oh boy. Can almost taste the justice. All driffy and runny. 
Like Sunday stew. What's this? A note. It's a note. It's a note. Dear Brick, welcome to my lovely base. Unfortunately, it won't help you at all in stopping me. The heists are already in progress, and there is no end to my inevitable domination. Enjoy your few remaining days of freedom, gentlemen. Good day. By God, then. Looks like this is the base. You know what we do now, man pipes. What's that? Watercrest thinks he's got us beat. But we must lie in wait like the ever ready tiger. We'll pitch a tent here tonight, man pipes. We will pitch a tent. Let's pitch a tent. It'll be great, man pipes. You and me. Communing with nature. Sitting out under the stars. Enjoying the natural surroundings. Although, this abandoned hideout does have sort of a, dare I say, spooky aura to it. <sighs> Who knows what might be lurking in these woods at night? Why, it could even be grub wranglers. Grub wranglers? Or mothosauruses. Mothosauruses? Or trunk bottomers. Trunk bottomers? Shudder to think. What about? You don't mean. What about? You don't mean! <laughs> it's the ghost of L. Basket Calhoun! Back from the dead on the eve of the night we all betrayed him! To steal our money, break our knees, and drive our mother's car! <laughs> Man life, the evasive scuttle 13! so long and I can't believe we just break up with something as like this, oh my god. All these years it's just gone. Uh, the only word I see is hard love. Every single one of them. Open hard love, pink sand hard love, ultimate hard love, black velvet hard love. Reminds me of Thursday nights with hard love. Hey, stud. Hi. Wanna buy me a drink? Not, no. So. You come here often? I used to come here with hard love all the time. Who? Oh, you, you wouldn't know him. He's an old friend. Hey. Oh. You're this close to being hard love. You're literally this close. If I'm not hard to love. So what do you do for your work? Well, see, I used to be partners with Hard Love at the police station, but, um... Ooh, a police officer. Yeah. You have big muscles. Yes. They're actually inflatable. But Here. anyway, so we've been caught up in these heists that have been going around town with this guy. And, yes, thank you. Uh, we just had a little bit of a fight, and we kind of messed up. It was... It's like the time Julian went like rrr, rrr, rrr. Hard love one. You know me and him, we used to build sandcastles. 
And even if, even if he was the cru invader, I'd let him in. That's that's how much he meant. We'd even break. Sa we called it Sandcastle Wars. I'd even I'd even let him in. I'd let. I had a moat. It was a three foot moat, which was tough. But I let him in. I can't hear what you're saying. I'm looking at your hair too much. I really like redheads. Oh. You're kind of cute. So much hard love, so little time. He used to call me Strawberry. You want to come over? Strawberry? And when, when we were on the beach, he'd bury me up to my neck, and he'd pretend he was a farmer. And he'd come over and go, I have a whole family to feed. How will I feed them? It's a good thing there's a bunch of strawberries here. And he'd pick me up by the ears, and he'd wrap me in a towel, and he'd pretend I was a crepe. You should come over to my place. I can't remember a time when I've taken off these glasses in my whole life. I have a waterbed. Waterbeds are soft, cold, not very warm, and glasses wearing, they don't have ties. Or your place. My God. Sudish. It's great. I'm gonna have to tell Hard Love about this. So, uh. Where do you work? Sorry? What, what? Where do you work? Well, well, I guess you could call it work. Me and I, I run a single duo, a single pair. I run a, I'm, I'm the left shoe. I'm a gum shoe. I'm the left gum shoe at a business detective. And there's been a lot of things going down. But I'm I'm a detective. I oh work. really? Do you solve murders? I don't solve them so much as I commit them. We should have sex. <sighs> Sudash so. indeed. I I I fixed them. You fixed them. A guy murders? was a guy was murdered once. I stopped him. Wow. Yeah. What did he do? You know, he was he was waving himself around, going murder. And I just, I said no. We should get out of here. I, I can't forget about hard love. Why don't you just forget about him and focus on your own life, specifically me? You know, that, that single slap has made me rethink my entire existence. You're right, I'm a, I'm a man. I, I can think for myself. I don't need, I don't need a straw. Be a draw this time, El Capitan. Oh, mon frere, you mistake my power. Oh, now we will meddle. Oh, dear God.
you know, Lombarda. I haven't, I haven't felt this way about since about someone since since Hard Love. Oh. Yolanda chest trumpet. It's your hats. You just have you had you had so many of them. Yeah. How do you keep them all in a row? It takes so much time. I know. I know. I had a I had a hat rack at my house. Really? Yeah. It was it was it was about it was about three feet tall. It's about a three foot tall hat rack. How many hats did it hold? About a lot of hats. And, you know, if you've got a lot of hats, you, you know, a hat rack holds a lot you of do. hats. You do. I I never had a hat rack. Can we stop talking about hard love, sweetie? Give me some hard love. You know, it's twenty five cents for the ride. Where do I put that twenty five cents? We could probably buy tickets at the entrance. I, I, I think, I, I don't know. I, I, maybe the rack's too big, maybe the rack's too small. Is it, is it not sturdy? I mean, is it, is it just... No, it's plenty is sturdy. Is it just droopy? Do the hats just slide it's, off? It's, it's quite firm. Um, they just, they don't seem to like it. Uh, maybe it's just misshapen. You know, the doctor did say something about that. Yeah. When my, when my rack was first diagnosed, it was just, the problem was, Made it from lump wood. Oh, oh. Yeah, and it was it was a very good rack. That's the worst kind of wood. So we got a new rack that looked. You've seen the Eiffel Tower, right? Briefly. Yeah. If you imagine the Eiffel Tower, inflated to look like a cloud made of inflatable cloud metal. Just imagine that. Just, just Honk, honk. Would you, uh, would you like to see my rack now? I'd love to see your rack. My father was a planter, and he planted his fields, and he said, Son, one day I want you to have sex with a woman. And he gave me a date, and that date was today. Do you want to plant fields now? I want to plant them now. I've got my thresher. And a let's, mechanical reaper. Let's plant them now. A bag of seed. Let's reap. Oh, we're gonna reap. Reap until we grow cotton. Come on, baby. <laughs> Stop thinking about him. Look never. at me. Take my clothes off. I've never loved anyone but hard love before. I'm kind of anxious and worried. No! 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 <laughs> I can't do this. I really, I can't, I can't, I can't be with you. I'm gonna be just some sort of cheap whore. I've, there's only, there's only one person I've truly, truly loved. Hard love. Ow! He's back. Try this, this isn't right. None of this is correct. I was wrong, hard love. I was more than wrong, I was incorrect. It's good to know you're back on my side. It's good to feel hard love all over me once more. We got, we got stuff on across us right now. We almost said the same exact thing. Let's That's go and press the. We are one. We are hard love. Let's go. I have something to say. Who are you? Russell Manpipes, Junior. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think about hats? I like hats. It's not really cheap. We got traffic in the last location. Don't worry, the boxes are all in a row now. Well, there's no time to lose. We just got a letter saying the big heist is going down tonight. When? Tonight! Tonight? That's this evening! Oh my god! Are you ready to go? Always! Hello, welcome to the first meeting of the Store Clerk Federation. Today's topic of discussion is the terrible robberies that are happening in these stores. I agree, something must be done about these robberies. 
I have lost many, many things, very, very bad. I have lost my wife, my dog, my house, and most importantly, my chicken tikka masala. I have heard that the big heist is tonight. Tonight? But that is this evening. And this is our last chance to stop them. Let's do this hard lock. Off to the base, pronto hard lock. She wants to get there fast. You know, something seems fishy about this whole thing to me. I mean, I don't know what it is, but why don't we why don't we not go to a location? Why don't we go to Watercrest Base? I mean, Chief told us where he thinks it is. But Chief gave us his orders. Look, he'll be pissed off if we fail, but imagine how impressed he'll be if we find Watercrest and capture him firsthand. But don't you remember that time we tried to get honey for Grand Nana's birthday? But we just ate the we just ate the bees' nest before we got rid of the bees. I do. That hurt so much. It did. I don't want to go through that again. You won't. With you when you're with me, huh? Promise, I love. Promise. Let's go. Crank up the tunes. I, I forgot my seatbelt. to the hour with every second that passes. As much as we have for the past month or so that we've been plotting this heist. Tonight, our devious scheme comes to fruition. Are you ready? I'm ready. You? Not quite, boss. Not quite? Not quite. Well, say you paste. I have one great goal in my life now, that I must see a great man. No, we talked about this. You said I'm you would go through with this. must do it. Like my father and his father before him, I must seek out George Clooney and make him mine own. Pace, that's ridiculous. I must see him. Speak to him about Oceans 14. It is imperative that I do so. Well, Pace, with your mind so clearly on other matters, you are useless to me in this heist. Don't pursue your man love, Pace. I expect never to hear from you again. Yes, boss. You! Yeah. See to it that the job is done. You got it, boss. You'll be acting on your own now. I know, boss. I know. I'd love there's a door in the way! Ugh. You're under arrest, Watercrest! You're too late, pigs. My Too man late. is already on the job. Too late? What time is it? I think it's... I think it's arresting time. I think it is arresting time. Prepare to be bedded by the big behemoth of law! <laughs> Hear those bells, man pipes? Yep. It's 1.15. Time for the heist to go down. I'm ready. Ready to. Where are those hard loves? They're supposed to be here. I don't know. Whatever. I never trusted them. It's more glory for us that way. Yeah. When those criminals come, we will take them down. Alibis will serve as poor snorkels in the harsh, swirling depths, the frigid waters of justice that we will subject them to. Finally, 
revenge on Watercrest. I've waited years for this. My father would be so proud. Your father would be dead. Oh dear, it smells like a crime. Tall, so powerful, 
so diabolically evil that no one can resist his ability to save men. And him with his comrade sidekick, Mantanana! Hard love wears Merchant Fungus! You sure? But I, I just saw him no. three days ago. No, he can't help us. Three days ago, he went to go clean my aunt's basement. Help us. Good work, Sudesh. Manpipes, stay here with the criminal. Sure thing, Chief. I'm going to Watercrest Space alone. Alone? Alone. Oh no, Chief. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Good luck. No! I mean, yeah, thanks. against this town! Not the town! He's a witch! He's a witch? Go for it! Go for it! Go Annihilated. Now that the music has heightened the sense of suspense in this tale, it's time for the warhead. Stop him! Don't let him press the head! Give him the head, Watercrest! Give him the head! I've been pushed! I've held it back and I can't control myself! Oh! I'm down on the ground here! You're gonna move faster, you know! I'm sorry. I guess I was just too encumbered with justice. What are we gonna do? There's no stopping him now! Oh no! He's unstoppable now! Gentlemen! Goodbye! Oh! Fetch it! Fetch the arrow for me! Who, who are you? <laughs> I am your best nightmare. Really? Yes. I am the nightmare you've been working for years on. Because I am not what I seem. What do I seem to be, sir? If I had to guess, I'd say you're a pedologist. Aha! Uh -huh. I am not what I seem! My God. I am, in fact, an undercover government agents. Pausing! He is pausing. He is pausing. It's very nice. I'm also pretending to be a hideout. Really? Oh my god. And this poor duo oh, bought a hideout from me. A hideout that looked suspiciously like this place. However, using some secret intelligence that my Mr. Fetchin fetched for me. Fetch me some light bulbs and more intelligence, Fetch. Uh, sure. Um, sure. I was able to determine where he would be and used my US government issue Indian arrow nice. to kill him. Yes! This explains the missing petunias in Mrs. O'Grady's yard. Oh, I God. stole them! Because those petunias were the set that would lead Gorman and his There's a spider on me. Theme, I love the spider operator. 
Thank you. Hideout issue. Standard in the U.S. government. Oh, that explains the file. It keeps police away, but brings agents like me. Spider files, as we're sometimes known, to the scene. That explains why crotchety old Mr. Fenton wouldn't let us into the lighthouse. Exactly. He wanted to hide the rack ruby. And the yes. writings on the staircase. They were That's running. my black ruby. Oh. And none of you are going to get it from me, you understand? Mr. Fenson has no right to that lighthouse. That's a hideout that's part of my merchandise. And the United States government doesn't have the right to requisition that one from me. Sure, I'll be a mole. Sure. Sure, I'll rot out all my confederates. But nowhere are they getting the ruby. And if you're telling me that they've got it, they could damn them all. To hell with everyone. Oh dear, we were going to take him out in our motorboat called the Sleuth. Well, I guess... And China Roman gentlemen! Oh my. And so another cleft chin bigman falls down, suckled at the teat of justice. You want me to go leave? I've got apples to apples in my car. Oh huh? really? That's yes! Terrible. It's it's good game. Let's go! To say. Not, not now, Matt Badger. You're having an emotional ballad. I've got something to say that I think you really should hear. Uh, Panpipes, all I really want to hear is the sweet, sweet sound of the lute coming through the pines. Uh, I've got something to say. What is it, Manpipes? I. Man Pipes Jr. I forgot what I was going to say. Hard love, hard love, hard love, hard love. Is that in the stranger's manger? You don't know him, well, that's bread and danger. Hot love, hot love. Tell us the tale that we all adored of the Viking prince and the sacred gourd. Hot love, hot love. Count your toes. Three, 
let's play a twist, let's play Scrabble. Let's play a twist, let's play Scrabble. Let's play a Stratego. We'll play it soft and slow, like we used to when you were still my dad. My big, broad, bushy dad. What kind of love? Tough love. Hard love. Hard love. Hard love. Hard love. Don't you cry, man. Don't you pout, man. Let's just meet our friend, Brick Stout, man, at the truck stop in. What's the cheese of the day? Cheddar. Hot love, hot love, hot love, hot love. Hey, I know something we can do. Let's make a pouch in our stomach like a kangaroo. Hot love, hot love. And it all comes down to you. And you hot love and hot love kick in the ball kick in the ball score in the goal score in the bowl cereal bowl what's in your bowl lucky charms nope alphabets Hot love, 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 hot love. Let's play a twist, let's play Scrabble. Let's shout out of the rabble. Hot love, hot love. Here's a fact that I have gleaned. There is no more insidious fiend than Jasper P. Watercrest. Hard love, hard love, hard love, hard love. Hi, thanks for coming here. Take a seat right here on the table. Yes, I'll remember here. I probably guess. Okay. Oh, George. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Funny. He's yeah. going to go under your butt. Okay, okay. Oh, nice, okay. nice, nice. Okay, nice. you. Nice, nice, nice. About there. No. Yeah. And oh, lay down. Okay. And then and he's going to go around. Yeah. No. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh. There you go. Oh, 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 oh.
friends, neighbors, relatives, acquaintances, thank you all for coming here today to witness the joining, the passing, the joining and the manhood of a group of very special slash evil people. Some would say that marriage is the fruit of labor, a grapefruit that grows out of a gnarled tree and falls upon the breast of a loveless bird. I say nay. Marriage is a mighty oak growing from your bed. And you would say, from all that time sleeping in my bed, where, from whence did this mighty oak come? And the only answer you get is shut up and plant me in a different place that isn't your bed. Some would say death is but the gerbil and the butt of those who love life. You can't remove it, but you must accept it. I say nay, that's what a bar mitzvah is, and that's why we are here to honor a bar mitzvah boy who is not yet present. Thank you all for attending. We will start with the services. We will start going in clockwise order with these two men who wish to be joined, civil union. Do you, Agent Hardlove, and you, Agent Hardlove, even actually have any idea what a civil union is and what it implies? No one. Very well. Do you have the glasses? I do. You may now do whatever it is you bad mamma jammas do. God, do you not see their perfect love? Have you no eyes? God has six eyes, like a spider. Who is blind in two eyes? Do you swear to keep each other, to rock and to jangle with, to swing from trees and build houses with, to keep the justice going like a mighty flowing river forever and ever and August? Yes. Yeah, you know it. Then get going. Get going together, and God bless you. Can't we watch? Yes. Uh -oh. We are gathered here today also to witness the union of three very special people. Miss Lombarda, Mr. Russell Manpipes Jr., proud son of Russell Pipes, and Yolanda Chest Trumpet. It is often said that when a man and a woman fall in love and decide to get married, wolves often line up outside the cathedral to see the newborn and lick his brow. That man will grow up to be Palmenberg, the greatest lumberjack in the history of Sweden, and he will go on a mighty quest to chop down every tree in Sweden, but send it to dress book. And instead, Palmenberg, instead of chopping down every tree in Sweden, he will kill every mayor of every town. In Sweden. And that is why marriage is like a failed lumberjack. It just takes you by force and sweeps you up and kills your mayor and every mayor in your country. And nobody knows why or how, but often, often we push through. And if you two, three, think that you've got the guts to kill those mayors, then by God, get to doing it. Get to killing those mayors, to have and to hold one another on a boat, on a barge, on a plane. Get your children reared up. Name them, number them one through seven so you know who they are. Don't name them confusing names like Yolanda Chess Trumpet. Who can remember that? Who can remember that her name is Lolita or Greg, etc. Or Phil, the president of nothing. That's why I say to all of you, if anybody else wants in on this, come and get it. By God, come and get it. Chest trumpet! Take Russell Manpipes Jr. to be your lawfully wedded law enforcer. Yeah. Do you, Greg, etc., take Russell Manpipes Jr. Lombarda. Lombarda. Who is you? Do you take Russell Manpipes Jr. to be your lawfully wedded law enforcer? I do. 
Do you, number 24, take Russell Manpipes Jr. to be your lawfully wedded law enforcer? Yeah. Do you, Russell Manpipes Jr., take these three women to be your lawfully wedded law enforcers to have and to hold through tropical storms and eyes of hurricanes, which you are afraid of and stay in your basement for? I... Russell Man Pipes Jr., proud son of Russell Pipes, do. Very well. Form a circle, all four of you. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Love, love, yay, love. Very well. You may now sit down for the remainder of the ceremony. We now move to a more somber chapter of this ceremony, the, the funeral of Jasper P. Watercrest. Some would say that Watercrest was evil, and he was, but he was nevertheless our friend. And he had two very dear henchmen who are here today who would like to pay their respects before. He is, as per his dying wish, turned into a glove and thrown out to lake. Come and speak. Come bid your master a fond farewell to that great secret hideout in the sky. Do you have George? I forgot George. It's okay. Jasper P. Watercrest was like a mentor to me. <laughs> he was like a, a centaur to me. So senseless! I know. And I never got to tell him how much I loved him. Tell him now! We can hear you! I love you! We can't hear you, he said! I know! That's what I said. Don't you have anything to say? I love you, man. Oh, so much. George Clooney. I love you too. <laughs> and now. <laughs> it never gets any easier. I'll be okay. Face. I'll be okay. That's against the world, right? Are you ready to be a man? Uh, Sudesh! I'm afraid to. You're afraid of what? I'm afraid of becoming a man, sir. Afraid of becoming a man? Show me the way, sir. Sudesh, there are plenty of things to be afraid of. There's bats, there's steamboats, but being a man, that's nothing to be afraid of. But let me tell you the story of when I became a man. It was at the mall one Christmas morning, and I was sitting on Santa's lap, and there was a long line of children, all eager to get a piece of that sweet, jolly thigh. And I was the last in line. And in front of me was a very elderly man. He could barely stand. He was shaking. He had a tuft of hair on the back of his otherwise bald scalp and gook in his eye. He was very old indeed. Hours passed, and child after child sat upon the great jolly knee, claiming their plastic bowling sets and flying machines, and going their merry way. I waited for my turn to come, and right before me, the very old man clawed his way. At this point, he was very exhausted, because he could not stand for very long. He clawed his way up to Santa Claus, clawed at his face, finally made his way up to his lap. And Santa goes, what do you want for Christmas, little boy? And the man said, death, 
kill me, kill me. And Santa got really afraid and he just chucked him away. And I don't even know if he's alive or dead now. But that was when I realized that I too would have to grow up and be as wise and noble as the janitor who scraped that old man off the floor with his waxed mop. And that's why, Sudesh, we all must become men. We all must grow. Grow like grow pets in water. You too can be a man like Sudesh. I now pronounce you man, king of earth. Mazel tov. Mazel tov.